Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, a.k.a. Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in to find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. Now, it's time for Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf, the number one relationship advice radio show in the U.S. Everybody and welcome to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. The Ask Dr. Love Show is the number one relationship advice show in America, and we're now syndicated in five of the top 10 U.S. radio markets. That's New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Atlanta, and Boston. You can visit AskDrLove.com and look under the top menu for the upcoming Ask Dr. Love radio show, and all the local stations are listed along with the air times. All the stations stream online and through all the streaming apps, and the show is also available worldwide on iHeartRadio. But don't worry, if you miss the live show, all the recordings are archived on AskDrLove.com. Now, you know, it's my mission to help you turn conflict into connection with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even coworkers. And I want you to enjoy a lifetime of overflowing love in all your relationships. And in this show, we're going to have a weekly topic. And topics might include how to use your ears to resolve relationship conflicts or the battle of the bulge, how to end your sex wars, and so many more topics. And then we're going to have rotating segments. The first one is In the Ring, and this is the first reality radio segment. And I'm going to roll up my sleeves and guide you to resolve relationship rows live on air. Nobody's ever done this on syndicated radio before. We're going to also have a reading between the sheets segment where I put your sex snarls to bed and Dr. Love's quickies, which are fun relationship education spots like how to tell the difference between love and lust. Never use your Peter as a love mirror and more. And of course, guest interviews with today's top authors and experts. If you want to be in an in the ring segment, shoot me a message at AskDrLove.com because I am here for you. Just keep remembering, I'm devoted to helping you reconnect, connect better with every person in your life. So write to me at Ask Dr. Love and tell me what's on your mind, what topics you'd like me to cover in this show, and I'll do my best to answer your wishes. So today's show, is your relationship sagging from a libido that's lagging? Today, we're going to read between the sheets, and we're going to uncover the causes of your flagging sex life. A flagpole flying at half-mast can be caused by many factors, including faulty foreplay, stress, depression, anxiety, certain meds, physical ailments like diabetes, low thyroid, adrenal burnout, hormone imbalances like low testosterone or low estrogen, or even estrogen dominance pain syndromes, clogged arteries like atherosclerosis, prostate enlargement, toxicity in the bowel or liver or kidneys, and antidepressant medications and low blood sugar drugs can also zap your sex drive. And I even have an entire chapter in my latest book, If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again, in which I share research proving that sexual dysfunctions are often caused by undiagnosed PTSD. Yes, sexual dysfunctions are often caused by undiagnosed PTSD. So today, we're going to work on getting to the bottom of why you're bottoming out in the bedroom so we can solve your bedroom blues. Now, the first cause of a sagging sex life can be faulty foreplay. And it's true, many couples, couples fall into ruts that lead to boredom. There are all kinds of books and articles offering advice on how to improve your sexual mechanics. But remember this, 
even the best technique will not raise the flag if there are other factors in the mix. So the point is, if improving your sexual technique doesn't solve your problem, then it's time to focus on non-sexual factors, the emotional, relational, and physical issues that can cause lagging libido and bedroom blues. So let's start with stress. Today, more than ever, stress has reached epidemic proportions. The pandemic woes, solitude, long work hours, and money worries. And of all the stressors, relationship conflict is the biggest passion deflator. And relationships are under fire now more than ever, which is why sex lives are lagging all over the world. I've spent a lot of time conducting research with real couples in conflict. And there's a lot of scientific research, including my own research, confirming that Relationship distress causes a chemical imbalance in the body that's called ANS arousal. That's autonomic nervous system arousal. And that's also known as the fight flight response. Now the biochemicals that cause ANS arousal are incompatible with the chemicals required for sexual arousal. So it's vital to learn how to handle your anger properly. Unresolved anger is the number one passion deflator. And in the weeks and months to come, we're gonna be talking a lot more about how to handle conflicts and the angry feelings that go with it. And I wanna reassure you that you're in good hands. I've spent my 40 year career testing and perfecting a conflict resolution method that works for the, for the majority of gay and straight, young and old, single and married couples who use it. And the method also works for resolving conflicts with friends and family members and even coworkers. So stay tuned each week and I'm gonna help you transform conflict into connection. You deserve love and I don't want you to become another divorce statistic. And I don't want you to have breakups with friends and family that you love. The reality is relationships don't fall apart because of lack of love. No, it's the unresolved conflicts that erode our feeling of love and then our relationships fall apart. When we're in conflict, stress chemicals are produced by our adrenal glands. The more you're in conflict, the more overworked your adrenals are. And over time, the adrenals become tired and less able to handle stress. Major vicious cycle in the making. So if you suspect that your adrenals are fried, try yoga. There's a great posture, legs up the wall, that really helps yoga, helps you restore your adrenals. And then exercise is great too. But if you're over 50, don't overdo any exercise because that pounds the adrenals even more. And deep breathe, in for four, rest for two, out for 25 to 30 and meditate and watch your thoughts. And did you know that you can actually be your own, your very own boogeyman or boogeywoman, scripting your own scary movies in your head by futurizing, which consists of worrying about horrendous what if scenarios. Futurizing taxes the adrenals even more. And don't forget that your diet can actually put stress on your adrenals and make you less able to handle stress. White sugar, white flour, white rice, potatoes, and caffeine. The adrenals, all those things hurt the adrenals. And the adrenals also need lots of vitamin C and B vitamins for stress recovery. Later on in this show, we're going to focus on the specific nutrients that are going to help your body reverse the stress chemical production. But don't kid yourself. No amount of yoga, meditation, or nutrients can compensate for the stress chemicals that are produced by unresolved relationship conflict and fighting. So when it comes to reducing stress and a lagging libido, your relationship status is perhaps the most crucial factor. Think about it. Most people have no issues in the bedroom when their relationships are new. But as time goes on, couples end, couples, you know, end up with a storehouse of hard feelings related to a pileup of unresolved conflicts. Now, in the show last week, I talked about value conflicts as a source of relationship fighting. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how, about how unresolved conflicts can be caused by not providing each other with what I call relationship essential nutrients. These nutrients have to be in your relationship's daily diet if you want your relationship to thrive. If your relationship is getting you down, you ain't going to be getting down. 
So men's essential nutrients can be boiled down to what I call the two A's, admiration and appreciation. The male gender role is instrumental or task oriented. This means men are raised to make things happen and to act and to produce. When a man loves his partner or his spouse, he's wired to move heaven and earth to make her happy. In turn, a man needs to feel that his, partner's, his partner or spouse values what he does for him or her. So men need to be A, admired, and A, appreciated for their strength, power, achievements, and their efforts to protect and provide for their life partners and their offspring. These are the two A's. Most relationships go sour for men because women nag and complain about what their partner isn't doing right. To have a happy relationship or marriage, the savvy woman knows you have to directly state what you want and what pleases you rather than complain after the fact of over what you didn't get. When a woman falls into that, what I call the fight trap, the three scrooges, nagging, whining, and complaining, a guy feels useless as a man. It causes him to give up on his partner, stop trying to please her in and out of the bedroom. And then he may go looking for a partner who doesn't value him. And by the way, the research shows when guys are asked why they cheated, it's rarely because they were feeling starved for sex. And since couples tend to shower each other with praise during the honeymoon phase, it's easy to see why a guy can get seduced by the rewards of another person, another woman, let's say, who makes him feel unconditionally admired and appreciated. And then when the opposite is true, when a man gets adequate admiration from his life partner or spouse, he doesn't need to go looking elsewhere for his two A's. Now, the, what are the women's relationship essential nutrients? What do women need to be happy in a relationship? Women need the two S's, safety and security. So men are wired to be protectors and providers, and a woman is biologically programmed to find a mate who's going to provide and protect her and her offspring. It's that simple for a woman. And don't be fooled, even if a woman earns a good living and doesn't need a man to take care of her financially, her biological programming does not know this. And in fact, research shows that wealthy women choose life partners who are even more financially successful than they are because women have a biologically programmed need to feel safe, protected, and secure. And this is fueled by primitive, biologically based survival of the species imperatives that a woman choose men who will never abandon them and their offspring. So the way a man gives this emotional providing, the safety and security, is, and lets her know that he's not going to abandon her is frequent reassurances and words and actions that he's devoted. This is what I call emotional providing. And a woman needs to feel she's first in her man's heart and mind, that he listens to her, takes her feelings to heart, shows her in words and deeds that he values her above anyone else. And this provides that deep sense of safety and security that she needs. Now I go into all the details about relationship essential nutrients in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. So check that out because if you really want to ensure your relationship is humming along and providing the right sexual soil for your love and passion to grow and thrive, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye is going to help you. So, so here's the thing. Here's your takeaway message. To lower your stress and raise the flag, connect better. In your intimate relationship with your life partner and spouse, pro focus on providing each other with your relationship essential nutrients. When you both feel fed, love flourishes. And then the desire to make love flows naturally from the connection that you share. So we're going to take a brief break. When we come back, you're going to meet Sandy Sanderson. And we're going to talk more about the physical causes of a sex life that's jumped the tracks. And we'll discuss how to get your sex life back on track using nutrients that can dampen the sex response. Be back with you in a moment on Ask Dr. Love Radio. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Did you know only one stress, one accident, or one illness can trigger PTSD? And did you know that all the stress associated with the pandemic has created what I call the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome? And don't be so quick to say, I don't have PTSD, because many conditions like depression, anxiety, pain syndrome, sleep disorders, and sexual dysfunctions are PTSD in disguise. And don't be fooled, even after the pandemic is behind us, your PTSD will not go away by itself. 
hope is in sight. In my latest book, If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again, I share a simple, research-backed, drug-free program for reversing the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome, a solution your doctor doesn't likely know about. Read If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again today and be on the road to recovery right away. If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again became a number one international bestseller within 24 hours of its publication. Grab your copy on Amazon and find out why. Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, a.k.a. Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in to find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's best-selling Hay House book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship, shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. To find out more, visit AskDrLove.com. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love Radio, and I'm very excited to have my dear friend Sandy come and visit us again. She's going to be talking with us in this segment about the medical side of how to get your sex life back on track using nutrients that can dampen the sex response. So Sandy Sanderson. She has a Bachelor of Arts from the University of New South Wales and postgraduate studies in business and marketing. She's a publisher of This Month on the Gold Coast Magazine, founder and CEO of Electromagnesium from 2000 to the present. And Sandy had a health crisis in 2008 from years of stress overload and shift working as a magazine publisher. And she discovered that magnesium deficiency was the primary cause of stress-related diseases. Without enough magnesium, cell metabolism and recovery is diminished, and transdermal magnesium helps Sandy to recover from her heart arrhythmias and other symptoms of Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. So welcome back to the show, Sandy. So here we are. We're talking about whether your hormones could be making you moan, but not in a good way, right? Right, right. The whole stress response and how it causes a sagging sex life. So- What would you like everybody who's watching and listening to know? Well, what I found in my research and studying is that hormonal issues are super important. They're quite widespread. Um, A lot of people have imbalances in hormones and they have a big effect on us physically as well as mentally. They, They directly influence behaviors Um, and via the autonomic system, so automatic pilot, you know, they make us do things without thinking. Um, And, you know, often we can blame it on the hormones. But when you look a little bit deeper, uh, hormone imbalance and problems with hormones come down to something energetic that's happening in the body. So our electrical, our whole electrical system, um, it drives the hormone production and the balance and the regulation. So if we've had a lot of stress, um, we're nutrient deficient, we burned the candle at both ends, maybe we've had some traumas, maybe some PTSD, for various reasons, we can become uh, magnesium deficient, which then affects the mitochondria um, because mitochondria use magnesium to make ATP. So adenosine triphosphate is our electrical energy currency. And that supports all of the enzymes in the body, all the, the doing enzymes. They do things. They, they cut and snip. They build. They, they detox wastes. Um, so we rely heavily on our enzymes. They're our, our powerhouses. 
and uh, the mitochondria rely heavily on magnesium to make that very valuable ATP. And then so those enzymes then drive the production and the balancing effect of hormones. And a lot of hormones can be pushed out of the way. And as we get older, the, um, the production and the balancing of hormones starts to go a little bit out of whack. <laughs> uh, as, I mean, it can go out of whack earlier if you've had a lot of stress as well. Stress can cause premature aging. So when, when things get out of balance, you know, you might also get estrogen overload estrogen overload is um you know some women um are very sensitive to the pill um or you may be exposed to chemicals like plastics um and other medications and there's soy products which mimic uh the estrogenic effects so for various reasons our environment can impact upon us and make us estrogen dominant quite easily when we're younger women and the feelings of estrogen dominance are very overwhelming. We, we become a lot more sooky or maybe even histrionic. We, it's difficult to control emotions. Uh, emotions seem to just pop out before we can think because there's those drivers are run by the limbic system. So it's a very primitive part of the brain. That's the autonomic system. Um, and the thinking reasoning part is the prefrontal lobe where we're we're trying to work out oh damn I should have said that or I should have done this or I should have done that that comes in after the the emotions have been spilling over if we're estrogen dominant we also might burst into tears really easily little things become very overwhelming um, and we can swell up you know, with a lot, we can gain a lot of extra weight. We can get, um, have water retention. So, so the body needs the more, more estrogen when we're younger women because, you know, we have to prepare the body for childbirth and we have to have more nutrients stored. So in puberty, for instance, estrogen makes us get more curvaceous. We put on more fat weight around the hips and the bottom and the breasts um, and, you know, the estrogen creates a feeling of receptivity. So we, we receive, so the, the female then receives the male. And then on the other side of the fence, you have the male, which has some estrogen. So both males and females have both estrogen and testosterone, but the male has up to 20 times more testosterone. So it's a huge amount more. And in males... It's the only hormone attributable to directly and solely for creating their male appendage. <laughs> and for the, the third leg. You know, yeah. Sandy, I was just in the first segment, which, you know, you weren't here with me for the first segment. I talked about how stress disrupts the body, triggers ANS arousal and hormone imbalances. And that when we have these stress-induced hormone imbalances, the sex life, our sexual drive diminishes. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to, to, to talk about, you know, directly, I mean, you know, the adrenals are your, your stress glands. When your adrenals are under stress, and of course, relationship distress is a big trigger of adrenal fatigue and stress. So the pathway directly from the relationship distress, the stress in the relationship, the unresolved fighting, the adrenals become fatigued. And so it directly impacts your hormone production and you lose your sex drive. You wanna explain that pathway for people? Well, yes, so the adrenals are responsible for making most of uh, those sex hormones. So they're, they're called steroid hormones. Um, and they're made from <clears throat> sort of out of lipids. They're like fatty, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, the adrenals are always under a lot of pressure if the thyroid is suffering. So we have today a lot of issues with hypothyroidism um, and 
again, that they're from environmental stresses that can impinge on thyroid health. Maybe there's not enough nutrition, not enough iodine, not enough magnesium. Um, and mercury we, poisoning, um, mercury toxicity, well, yes, fluoride yes, affects so. the thyroid. So fluoride directly impacts the thyroid. In fact, in the 60s, they used to have a fluoride drug to treat hyperthyroid. So if you have an overactive thyroid, uh, fluoride is quite efficient at dampening that down and pushing it down. Um, the problem is that we've had so much fluoride in the environment, in the water supplies, and it's become, there's what's called the halo effect. So when they use the fluoridated water to then make foods, um, and then we eat those foods, those beverages, those drinks, those juices and sodas and everything that might be made from the fluoridated water. We're getting extra, extra, extra. And then there's fluoride in the toothpaste. And you might inadvertently swallow some traces. Then you have outgassing from um, those um, chairs and, you know, upholstery can sometimes be treated with chemicals. Teflon coatings can outgas from cooking equipment. And now they're putting fluoride also in a lot of medications as preservative because it's very effective at killing bugs, killing bacteria because it's a pesticide. So, so uh, one way or another, no matter how hard we try, we will get probably exposed to some fluoride, uh, but you can be more conscious about it and avoid what you, you know is there. The water supply is the biggest driver of that. Um, the fluoride in the in the diet so if you get a really good filter a water filter that does the fluoride you find and then get extra magnesium because it finds the fluoride or they find each other in the body they bind and then it, it doesn't get access to the cells it's much easier for the body to eliminate magnesium fluoride as a compound because it's very insoluble then so, so you protect yourself from fluoride exposure, you use the, the magnesium to flush out the fluoride you get inadvertently. This helps your thyroid, which in turn supports yeah. your adrenals. Yes, and you might need extra iodine too. So eat some extra seaweed, some sushi, um, foods. You can look them up online, the foods that have iodine usually contain a lot of magnesium as well. Um, so, um, so yeah, pay attention a lot to diet because if you are eating a lot of sugars and processed carbohydrates that will cause a lot of stress on the body and it will switch you from fat metabolism to sugar metabolism and that actually robs you of energy yes a lot of people think oh i need our sugar hit i'm really low in energy and that creates a revolving door so before you reach for your candy bar <laughs> think about think about putting really good things in your body so your so your proteins and fats and the, and the good the vegetables the watery vegetables with lots of vitamins and enzymes they do our detoxing the fats and the proteins provide the energy that we need in a very sustained manner and it's more efficient much more efficient energy production it goes a long way and it doesn't tend to have those massive big spikes and fluctuations if you have a sugar hit you have a, a big uh, overdrive in energy and then a following that is a crash but that's then, also taxing the adrenals because the adrenals are involved in the blood sugar metabolism so if you eat sugar your blood sugar goes up now your adrenaline has to pump to bring your blood sugar to, so you're you're weakening your adrenals just from eating the simple sugars that's right so i i weaken my adrenals because i had hypothyroidism and i developed hashimoto's from sleep deprivation so when i used to have my magazine publication and the gfc hit i had to you know let some staff go and that put a lot of extra pressure on me so i sometimes to get to print on time did a 24-hour stint without sleep and your body starts to produce this chemical which keeps you awake it's like like an upper and your eyes go really wide and your pupils dilate and and it is it's a terrible drug but keeps you awake plus the coffees, uh, but then you're damaging your adrenals. You think when you're young, you can do anything, you know, and you'll recover. And to some extent you can recover, but, but you are Not doing exactly. We're going to be taking a break. And I remember something Hans Selye said, that whenever the organism, the human organism is stressed, it ages and it doesn't really ever recover. It's sort of like another nail in the coffin. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment on Ask Dr. Love. <laughs> 
Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed out or suffering panic attacks, aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Or are you worried or depressed or feeling hopeless, like the world is coming to an end? Or are you not eating right or exercising or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, TV or the internet? Or abusing drugs or alcohol, figuring what's the point? Or maybe work is getting on your last nerve or your relationships are falling apart? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already changed the lives of some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. I'm offering a limited number of discounted sessions for my radio listeners. Visit AskDrLove.com forward slash energetic system upgrade. Don't wait. Visit AskDrLove.com forward slash energetic system upgrade. Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, a.k.a. Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in to find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, shows you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit. To find out more, visit AskDrLove.com. And now, back to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm talking with Sandy Sanderson about how we can help ourselves with proper diet and nutrition to dampen the stress response that weakens our adrenals and messes up our hormones and then lowers our sex drive. So what else do we want to know, Sandy? So um, sex hormones um, fluctuate the entire lifespan. So it's never fixed. If you get tests done um, this year, it may not be the same as next year. So you know, if you're worried about it or you're not feeling quite right, you know, it's probably a good idea to get a checkup on an ongoing basis um, just to adjust things, particularly if you're on some kind of hormone treatment or therapy uh, that needs to be regularly checked up because you don't want to push things out of the way. It's very complex. Hormone balancing is super complex. I have great respect for the body with the job it has to do with so many multiple you know, between the thyroid hormones and the sex hormones, and then you've got cortisol. Cortisol is an interesting one because, so it's a, it's produced by the adrenals like adrenaline. So cortisol and adrenaline are your stress hormones. And if you're in fight or flight, you're, you know, you're running away from the tigers and climbing up the tree so you can live. Everything else shuts down. You, you, so you release the adrenaline to pump the heart that that pushes the heart muscle, you release cortisol because that grabs onto glucose in, and transports it in the blood and gives access to cells of that glucose so your ATP mitochondria can make um, energy, the ATP energy. So, and if there's any surplus leftover blood sugars, it is because there's a very narrow window of range that's allowed to be in the blood for health so that any surplus not used to make energy then is transported to the liver and the liver turns it into glycogen for storage fat storage for use on a, at a later time and so this is a system for the healthy person but what happens when we don't um so, so some people can become insulin resistant 
So that cortisol and the insulin floats around and is sometimes not getting access to cells. This often happens with nutrition deficiencies, particularly magnesium deficiency, could also be because of potassium deficiency uh, and, and a lack of antioxidants. So if a, if a person's becoming more acidic, uh, their detox systems aren't getting rid of waste products and the blood plasma or the tissue plasma uh, drops into the acidic range, then you start to get um, pain and inflammation and you know all sorts of degeneration happening because acids chew us up. Okay, and then so let me insert something here just for like, because you're such a genius, you know, and you understand, you know, like you're the wizard about all the mechanisms and the functions of the body. Number one, when the cortisol is up, and you're in fight flight mode, you are not in the mood to have sex because it's a survival mechanism. Think back to when we were hunter gatherers and the hunter was faced with a tiger and the tiger's about to eat him. He's not thinking, gee, I wanna get home to my, uh, my cave and be with the missus. No, he's thinking, I gotta get out of here. I gotta survive, right? So sex goes out the window when you're in stress, when cortisol is being produced, when adrenaline is being produced. And then there was the, the other point that when you're too acidic, right, and inflamed and you're in pain, well, pain turns off the sex drive too. So I'm just making a little like footnote here, right? Yeah, well, thank you for that. There are good points because pain is also very stressful. Pain in and of itself causes excessive magnesium loss. So it becomes a downward spiral. Not only does the sex drive shut off, but also good digestion so right. so that's what we call being in the sympathetic mode when you're when you're in stress and and in flight or defending yourself then everything tightens up including the vagus nerve which runs down the digestive system digestion shuts off all your resources are going to go to your arms and legs ready for you know whatever you have to do the action and so your, your digestion, you can't rest properly. Uh, and to, to have the good sex hormones flowing and making you feel, you know, very amorous and for a woman receptive, you need not to be too tight. You need well, to you know, relax. And, and you're not, you don't even mean tight anatomically, but yeah. you know, the, the fact is, the tense, whole, I meant tense. Tense. Yeah, the muscles yeah, tense. Not anatomically tense, but tense. Because the you know the chemicals that are associated with the stress response, with autonomic nervous system arousal, also known as sympathetic arousal, fight flight response, those chemicals are incompatible with sexual arousal for men and women. Men can't get an erection when they're in this chemical imbalance, and women don't get lubricated, they don't have desire. It's like it's like two different realities. It, it isn't going to happen, you know? No. So you need to create a really nice environment. It's all about prep, good preparation. So if you know you, you're going to get lucky tonight, so <laughs> have, a, have a really nice meal. Shut out the outside world. You know, try not to think about any other crap that's going on outside create a little bubble in your own little world, yeah. you know, maybe have some candlelight, some nice music, something, some essential oils, or, or make a beautiful dinner, um, make your partner feel very special, and, and tr trust, you know, it's about trust, and it's about letting go, it's about actually letting more uh, oxytocin flow because we've talked about that recently that's another hormone that creates bonding and love feelings of love and warmth and trusting so you need to women especially need to trust a lot they need to 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 let go and receive the male they need to trust it's going to be all right and that male is going to protect them and they're going to be all right and yes it's all yes good. yes Exactly, exactly. And you know, it's funny because I said in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, I had read research that said that 
when a woman does not feel safe in her relationship, her, the first thing that happens is the sex drive turns off. And this is because she's thinking, I don't want to have offspring if this relationship isn't going to survive, right? And even though we have birth control and we can say, oh, well, I don't have to have an off any offspring if the relationship isn't gonna su survive, the biology doesn't care about birth control. It says, no, you're not coming near me. I don't feel safe with you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so a lot of things can come into play. And the other thing is, I think in rela family relationships, if something's bugging you or you have a lot of outside stress, people are sometimes not um, aware that they're bringing home that baggage and they let go on people that are closest to them, our closest family, our loved ones. We kind of dump on them sometimes with even without thinking that you say things that you would never say to anyone else outside. Correct. Because that because is so just correct. Let go. That's correct. The people you love the most. I always say, mind your mouth or your relationships will go south. Because you would never say these things to a stranger. Why say them to someone you love? And if you have, and if you have made a boo-boo, always apologize. Um, you know, uh, be really sorry and show you're sorry and make amendments and give them a big hug and a bunch of flowers or whatever, you know, make them a nice cup of tea. Do yeah. do do some pampering makeup. Really, for I it. am so dogged about this concept because I had this guy decades ago. He came in, he said, I can't control myself. I've got to let it go. When I and I'm like, dude, would you talk to a police officer that pulled you over this way or your boss? Well, what do you think? I'm nuts. I want to go to jail or get it lose my job. I, so you have more control than you think you do you're choosing to let it rip and you can choose not to let it rip verbally well, you know I, I i liken it to um farting in the presence of someone i mean we <laughs> we hold that in most of us i guess <laughs> when we can because of respect for other people in our environment right so <laughs> there you go so, so the, the a, a verbal assault or you know dumping your anger on someone is to me the same thing in it's words taking a verbal dump on someone is what yeah it is. yeah so we need to be i think more mindful when we get our relationships right the hormones are flowing we feel um less stress and and you know also stress dampens down uh, testosterone levels it's a two-way street so low testosterone maybe because of nutritional reasons um, and by the way um, magnesium and exercise in studies has shown to increase testosterone naturally so endogenous testosterone so for some reasons sometimes we might be low on testosterone but also excessive stress suppresses that testosterone or the testosterone might be bound up in um, something called sex hormone binding globulin and magnesium also helps to free that up and the testosterone is needed also for female desire not just male yes so yes. so that's what i was going to say even though we don't need as much anywhere near as much testosterone as men we do need some and that some makes a big difference to our feeling of well-being our libido and what testosterone does to the brain is make us more um, risk uh, seeking or novelty seeking or adventurous uh, or brave. So we are more likely to, you know, let our hair down and, you know, let fly when we've got a little bit more testosterone flowing through. Uh, obviously, always in balance with the estrogen and the progesterone. Which, which are the other female dominant hormones. Um, it's all about balance. You can't really try and get out of that balance loop. It, it's, so there are bodybuilders, for instance, that take anabolic steroids, their androgens and testosterone, et cetera, to build muscle. Anabolic means it builds tissue, builds muscle. Um, but then if they overdo it, they, they end up, the body can convert it back to estrogen and it has the opposite effect and they can get little penises. Yes, they get um, testicular atrophy and smaller penises. There they are all big and hulking with muscles. And then- And uh, very disappointing. <laughs> oh, and it's not the size of the wave. It's not, it's the motion of the ocean, but still you don't want to have, a, you don't want to have a, a shrinking penis. No, no, that's not- 
good for anyone. Yeah. Yes. So so we let's so we've covered. So what reduces? What kind of things can dampen down testosterone? So you know we've talked about chemicals that can suppress hormones, and and lack stress. of sleep, trauma, stress, magnesium deficiency, relationship discord. <laughs> relationship well that's part of the big stress thing the big there's, al there's also sleep apnea and this is a big one as we get older sometimes things get a bit loose and when we're sleeping we you know you you can block off airways which is no not very good for your health because then you're getting too much carbon dioxide and not enough oxygen that's not good for the brain for its normal functioning and not good for hormone production it actually suppresses testosterone so when we have uh, so men when they age and they start to lose that testosterone they they can get um, more frail um, put on more body fat they have less muscle mass um, get more um they, they get um they lose their mojo they they don't have the same get up and go the energy fat flat fails hold your mojo for one second we have to take a break but we'll be back in just a moment hi it's dr jamie turndorf did you know only one stress one accident or one illness can trigger ptsd and did you know that all the stress associated with the pandemic has created what i call the new global ptsd pandemic stress syndrome and don't be so quick to say i don't have ptsd because many conditions like depression anxiety pain syndrome sleep disorders and sexual dysfunctions are ptsd in disguise and don't be fooled even after the pandemic is behind us your ptsd will not go away by itself hope is in sight in my latest book if you think you don't have ptsd think again i share a simple research-backed drug-free program for reversing the new global ptsd pandemic stress syndrome a solution your doctor doesn't likely know about read if you think you don't have ptsd think again today and be on the road to recovery right away if you think you don't have ptsd think again became a number one international bestseller within 24 hours of its publication grab your copy on amazon and find out why ask dr love with dr jamie turndorf is now on the dream vision 7 radio network every wednesday and thursday at 1 a.m and 1 p.m eastern time with live video shows every first and third thursday at 1 p.m eastern time dr jamie turndorf aka dr love is the number one international best-selling author of love never dies how to reconnect and make peace with the deceased if you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in to find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish your relationship and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to schedule your session. But don't wait. Space is limited. Visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to find out more. And now back to Dr. Turndorf. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm talking with Sandy Sanderson about how you can reverse a flagging sex drive. So you were saying about sleep apnea and the carbon dioxide being linked to lower testosterone, which indirectly then lowers the drive. Yes, so it's very important to treat sleep apnea for many reasons, you know, for brain function, for hormone health, testosterone, and just a, a general feeling of well-being. You know, we're electrical beings. We need our electrolytes, our water, and our oxygen. Oh, my gosh. Oxygen is really important. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and so, so if you want to be very healthy, you've got to get your good deep sleep. You've got to 
address any issues of sleep apnea. Some people, you know, recommend to um, to encourage nose breathing to put a tape across the mouth. I don't know. I haven't been in that situation, but <laughs> my, when my my husband falls into that it's just because he's sleeping in the wrong position I, I give him an elbow so you know that moves some, onto people, his side. some people sew a tennis ball into the back of the top of a, a person's pajama top so that when the, you roll back onto the tennis ball it hurts and then you roll to your side ah, but there's another thing good. that I found that I'm so surprised that people haven't heard about this and it is a dental guard. You know, most people, they go to the hospital or the, an outpatient clinic and they do these sleep studies and then they get these big CPAP machines where they're blowing the air into their faces and they have to sleep with a mask on and their palate dries out. You can s reverse sleep apnea just putting a dental guard. Your dentist makes it and there's a special tab that connects the upper bite with the lower bite, so your lower jaw can't retract back and you don't snore anymore. And it's a it's a much less expensive solution and it works. Wow, I'm taking him to the dentist soon, <laughs> very, very this week. <laughs> I know, I'm always, you know, I say to people, well, every single thing that could ever go wrong with a human body, I've experienced, so, or whatever. So I, I, I'm like, I just happen to know this and it works. And when my husband developed apnea, I had him do that and it worked. Well, you know, scientists have found if uh, someone has this problem for a long time, it actually changes the structure of the face, yeah. the way the jaw sits. Um, and, you know, if your jaw moves out of position, you, you can give you other issues like headaches. Um, so everything in the face changes uh, yeah. with, with mouth, with mouth breathing. So and you, you know want what? Sleep apnea also damages the relationship because now I don't want you in the bed and I'm belting you all night long and, and then I don't feel close to you and then I'm cranky. So that's another way that the sex life sags just from that. Yes, I, I do know some cu couples that sleep in not only in separate beds, but now in separate rooms for exactly that reason. It is yeah. sad. I yeah. know. It I'll have is. to look into the dental yeah. guards and recommend yeah, we're going to get that dental. I'm going to have dentists all over the world saying, thanks, Dr. Love. <laughs> and so it, look, the other thing that can inhibit the um, testosterone is just gaining too much fat weight because fat cells can produce estrogen and that can knock some testosterone out of the way. So if you, um, I find this useful to do as couples. So my husband and I do a regular yearly fast. We do juice broth fasting. There are lots of different kinds of fasts. You can look them up online. It's an individual thing. Find something you like to do where you're giving the digestive system a rest. You're putting maybe some good, you know, nutrients in vegetable juices, something to to give you a little bit of extra energy. I, f I found water fasting a little bit too drastic. Oh, for me. oh my goodness. I, it, uh, we, I did that for 11 days and I developed like loose skin under my chin. And I'm like, I've got like a, I'm about to call a, a plastic surgeon to fix it. You know, it, it was so depleting. But what, another thing that really helps balance the hormones and support human growth hormone is what I think you do and I do it is the intermittent fasting. So every day I don't eat for about 18 hours and then I eat within a six hour window. Yes, you, you that's right. You just uh, have that six or eight hour window right. and then you're giving your digestive system a rest for the other, uh, the other part of the 24 hour clock. <clears throat> and that's very then good because- My body is younger. It's producing the growth hormone. All you're those and you're eliminating waste much more efficiently. And this is the crux of everything. Most people's health problems are because of an accumulation of toxins oh. and waste can't yes. be eliminated because we're always putting things down the yes. conveyor belt and yes. it's not ready yet because it's yes. still dealing with something else. Yes. And you know, it's funny because just having waste and toxicity in the bowel, the kidneys, the liver, makes you sluggish and can lower your sex drive. Just that, your mood, your sex drive. We could talk for three years. We only have three minutes left, if you can believe it. So as a parting message, what do you want everyone to know? 
So, um, oh my goodness, I was wanted to mention cold therapy and exercise as well. Oh, so that too. You can look those up because that creates a big flush of circulation. So you need to keep your circulation running. Um, your, your, so good sleep, circulation, diet and exercise, definitely lots of magnesium and sometimes zinc. Zinc is important for the sex hormones as well, zinc and selenium. Um, and they also help collagen production and um, so, so many things in the body. They have really wide ranging effects. Fats, right? People, the, the dietary fats are the yeah. building blocks for your hormones, right? People don't think about it. So not, don't be a sugar burner. Eat more fat for your yes. fuel. But I want, I want to make sure everybody can find you. Yes. So go to our website, Electrolife. No, no. Ele um, but that's my company, electromagnesium.com.au. So that's with a K, E L E K T R A, magnesium.com.au. We're in Australia, but please have a look at our website. I've got lots of information, articles, videos, a different product range to suit different people, different age groups, different skin types. So you can find something that suits you and you'll feel comfortable with, and that will really make a difference without having to digest <laughs> your magnesium. <laughs> Really, and you know, you cannot put the magnesium directly on uh, the genitals. That you cannot do. But you know, I did a little research about the pH of the normal vaginal tissue, and your cream is pretty close to the correct pH of postmenopausal vaginal tissue. We didn't even talk about painful sex that comes for many women after menopause, but the magnesium is really wonderful used externally if you use the cream to help build back the tissue you know yeah and yeah it, yes really so you wonderful. you can just sw swipe over externally and give it the groin area a little massage it's it's stimulating so you know if you're very sensitive you might feel a little bit of tingling but it's very short term and afterwards you just feel great yes. and it's also good to help uh, overcome uh, candida issues as well so yes. lots of really good health benefits and no chemicals so you know you're only putting really good high quality nutrient dense food <laughs> on your private parts <laughs> <laughs> don't well, don't do it don't do it and then have sex straight after because no, no. yeah yeah then you're going to, there's going to be burning south of the border. So Cindy, <laughs> thank you so much for being my guest. We'll see you again soon. See everybody soon on Ask Dr. Love. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Sign up for Dr. Jamie's newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive her meditation audio that will guide you to open your heart and chill out during these stressful times. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.